So it seems in the case of J.P. Morgan that concern about headcount expenses and um, some other issues are a big problem for investors. Do you think that's going to be more unique to the big banks or would that ultimately affect everyone? You know, I think that ultimately affects everybody. It goes right back to that headline number we just got a couple of days ago, the 7% year-over-year inflation. And, I mean, that, that's a reality. We're all dealing with it as banks. Our clients are dealing with it. And the real key, I think, is how are you going to answer it? Are you going to try to answer it by cutting back on your teams, or are you going to try to answer it by outgrowing it with revenue growth? Yeah, so talk about what you guys are doing at Wafed. The analysts are pretty excited. Uh, KBW saying, you know, you've done a great job transforming from a legacy thrift into more of a commercial-oriented bank. You've been leaning on technology and other things. How are you getting 5% loan growth? Yeah, no, we're, we've really got the momentum going for us. Now, the key for us is that we've been in the market consistently. So many people, when the pandemic hit, pulled back their lending. We didn't pull back. We, we leaned into it. And as a result, we had record loan production for the last two years. And as you called out, just this last quarter, we had $700 million of net loan growth. And the key is our clients. They know we'll be there for them in the good times and the bad times. And it's, it's, the momentum is just building for us. And when you look at the overall industry, it's flat loans. So to be able to have that kind of loan growth, I think is a real positive. Can you talk about what kind of customers those were and if you had any concerns about their ability to make it through the pandemic? Yeah, no, they, they, we, I think we all had concerns because, you know, two years ago, we were wondering what we're all looking into. Uh, but the reality is we've experienced huge appreciation in real estate. And about 80% of our balance sheet is in real estate loans. So those clients have done phenomenally well as real estate values have gone up. And you're seeing those clients now want to build more real estate or expand their portfolios. So what parts of the economy do you expect to be strongest this year? And where are you still seeing underperformance? Yeah, you know, we're in the uh, eight Western states, everything except for California, basically, and we're seeing strength almost across the board in our industries. The biggest obstacle people are seeing is how do they get enough employees to drive more demand? The demand is out there. It's finding the employees to be able to do that. So I think the answer that most people are trying to deploy right now is technology, bringing technology to bear. So the lowest paying jobs, you can serve those clients through technology and then really focused on the highest paying, the value added jobs. Right. And it sounds like in those cases that, you know, salaries and wages are still going up. Uh, do you want to just offer a comment as well on, I mean, should we expect you guys to be acquisitive this year? There's a, a lot of focus on what the Fed's posture might be towards deal making in the, in the bank space. Wh where do you go from here? Yeah, you know, we've done a number of acquisitions through the years. Uh, that is not our highest and best use of capital from our perspective. Uh, if we can post, you know, double digit organic organic growth, I think that's the highest and best use for our capital. Uh, acquisitions can be a wonderful thing, but acquisitions can also help cause you to lose your culture. There's so many great franchises that have gone down because they've done the wrong acquisitions. So never say never, but our, our preference would be just to continue to grow with clients we have today and bring on new clients.